All right, um, now what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you how to actually make surface cuts going all the way down. I've showed you how to do facing, counter sinking. Now we're actually going to cut this down to a certain diameter to a certain spot. Now if we take a look at our drawing, the first cut that we have to make to bring the diameter down is we're gonna go down 6.625 inches, okay? Now, um, you also have to look here and see what diameter you're cutting it down here. So I follow my leader lines over, and I'm at .785. Okay, so 9.625, or 6.625 inches down, and I'm gonna make it a diameter of uh, .785. Um, I've already marked this using the blue die and using the height gauge, so this is marked. Um, it becomes very apparent where this mark is once it actually starts spinning. So the next thing that I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna mount this in my vise. I wanna make sure that my piece actually takes up most of these jaws right here. Okay, I don't want just a little bit sticking out. I wanna take up as much as I can, but I also wanna make sure that when I make my cut down here, that my tool rest is not gonna come in contact and hit my chuck. So I'm gonna leave about an inch and a half sticking out, which should be just fine. Um, I'll have plenty of clearance, but again, always double check your clearance between your chuck and your tool rest before you um, turn the machine on and start feeding it. Okay. So, um, the next step that I have to do after I make sure this is nice and tight is I need to put my live center in the end. So, previous to this, I had, um, I had the chuck set up in here. I don't use the chuck anymore. Now we are going to actually use our live center. So I'm going to turn this out. Again, as you turn it out, this will just feed right out. Don't try just yanking it out, turn it out all the way, okay? And then I'm going to replace it with my live center right here. And the angle that's cut into my live center is going to be the same angle that was cut into my, um, cut into the countersink on the end here. So this will help support the end so it doesn't want to wobble around on me. And I get it fairly close. Um, I get it fairly close. I don't want to have my piece extended all the way out. Okay. I tighten down my tailstock. Tighten down my tailstock. And then I keep this loose so that I can turn it in. Now, I can start to turn it in right now. But you really want to make sure when you turn it on that this right here, our live center with the bearing, is actually spinning with it. So I'm going to turn it on real quick, make sure everything's out of my way. And you should be able to see that it is spinning with it. If it's not, you might need to tighten it a little bit more. Once you get it where you want it, then we tighten down the live center from actually coming out anymore. Don't crank too hard on this because all it'll do is try pushing the piece further into the truck over here. All right, so now this is all set up for making it cut all the way down. It's supported on both ends, so it isn't gonna wanna move around on me. Um, one last thing I'm gonna do is I had this set on zero before. I'm gonna set it more off to like a 45 degree angle this time. I'm fine. So we have to go and grab the wrench that we use for this. Okay. I'm gonna turn on a little bit more of an angle just so that this doesn't come in contact with the tailstock as I'm moving it around. Okay, so again, I'm gonna go somewhere around like a 45 degree angle. That should be plenty right here. So again, you just line up your mark right here to the 45. Okay. And for this, I'm going to be using, see, I'm going to be using my right-handed bit now. So I'm gonna be using the other bit that I ground up. And my right-handed bit has a cutter on the left. It's used for going from left to right. Okay, so I have this set up in my tool holder. I'm gonna double check and make sure it's tight enough. Now with this, the way that I want to set it up is so that the angle formed with my bit and the piece on this edge is right about 90 degrees. What that's going to do is that is going to put right here, that's going to put those little 90 degree cuts right in there. If I have it angled off too far and I try cutting it like that, it's going to form little tapers or little angles here where it meets up. So you want to try and get that as close as you can. You can always grab like a small piece of metal, like a square or something. Um, you could always grab like a cutting bit like this and then line it up so it's as square as it can be. Okay, so that looks pretty close right there. Now also, make sure when you're doing this that you have enough relief angle between this edge 
between this edge right here and your piece. Again, if the edge formed right here is butted right up against your piece, you're not gonna be cutting on your tip anymore. You're gonna be cutting on your tip and your edge. You're not gonna very, get a very good cut, right? So I have my angle set correctly. The last thing I need to check is that my cutting tip is just below the center of my, bit, of my piece. If it's above it at all, again, it's not gonna be actually cutting right here. So I need to make sure it's just, be, uh, just below the center, okay? Now we don't wanna go too low with it, otherwise it's gonna to wanna to try and grab the bit and pull it under, but we do need to make sure it's below the center. Okay, whereas before, we were just making sure it was right on the center, this has to be just a little bit, little bit below it to get the best cut. All right? Okay, so now everything is set in here, make sure my bit is actually tightened down. All right, and now I am ready to start making my first cuts, except for the fact that my tailstock is hitting right here when I try and move it back. Okay, what this tells me is all I need to do is move my tailstock back just a little bit more. And then bring this up some more to give myself plenty of room. Tighten there, tighten this down. Okay, one other thing I'm gonna check is to make sure that I can cut all the way down to my line without my chuck hitting my tailstock. That's where I need to be, so I'm fine. Everything's clear, and I am now ready to cut. Again, for this, um, if we were to do the uh, equation to figure out cutting, or to figure out spindle speed, we would be somewhere right around 400 RPM, which I'm already set at, so that should be just fine, okay? Now, when I make my first cut, for generally for steel, we're gonna take about 10 to 20 thousandths of an inch off. So for every time I make a cut, I will turn this in about 10 to 20 times, or 10 to 20 actual marks, which is 10 to 20 thousandths. Um, so what I do in the beginning, just to see if I'm touching, is I'll move my Y axis in, in and out, until I just start to scratch my piece so I know that I'm touching, okay? Now, like I showed you before, I am going to zero it, okay? So this is where, the bit is just starting to touch the surface and that is now my zero point, okay? So I'm gonna turn this on. Now, the first cut I wanna make, like I said, is gonna be about, we'll try the first cut at about 10 thousandths in. So again, I'm going to, I'm at zero, I'm gonna turn it in, 10. Okay. I'm gonna start making my first cut. Now, you can look and see how much is coming off of here. I should be able to take a little bit more off. And also right now, I'm just doing a manual feed. We have not yet learned how to set the auto feeds. So you are going to be kind of getting a feel and controlling how fast it cuts. You'll be able to tell if you're going too fast. It'll start making a little bit, a little bit of noises going on. Um, the chips are already, you can see the chips coming off or smoking a little bit. That's normal, it's steel, it gets very hot. You can use cutting fluid, but we're gonna try and refrain from that right now. Um, just because we don't want a whole bunch of smoke just shooting everywhere. So this first cut is just gonna keep going down. And I'm not gonna cut it all the way for this demonstration. I just want you guys to get the idea of how to calculate out how far to move it in. But I am gonna go ahead and make this first cut just to show you where you should stop about. Now, the first cuts that you make when you're just roughing it, it doesn't matter what the surface finish looks like. So when I'm roughing it, I will take quite a bit off at a time, and I will go fairly quick with it because I don't really care what the surface finish it looks like. I'm more concerned with just removing a lot of material quickly. If you're working in a machine shop and you're spending a lot of time on your first roughing cuts, they're not gonna be too happy with you because that's pretty much losing the money right there. So again, you keep bringing it down. And the slower you go, the better finish you will get, but I'm just trying to remove some material right now in the beginning. And getting real close to the line, this is where you just have to use your eye and see where the line is. I have a little bit more until I reach the line. Okay, I just got to the line. Now, 
like I told you guys before, instead of just moving this over in the X direction where it is, because that's just going to scratch it as it moves along, we want to pull it out and then move it down. Before we pull it out though, we need to remember where we were cutting. So right here, if we look at the dial, this is where I tell you to set it back to zero so that when you put it back in, all you have to do is remember to put it back to zero to make your next cut. If you left it on 10 or 15 or 17, it gets kind of hard to remember what that is. So always zeroing it helps with that. So I'm gonna bring it out and then I can move it down and then I can turn it in until I start to get close to my piece. Once I start to get close to my piece, I look and make sure that I get to my zero. You heard once I started to get to the zero, it just started to touch. So that's where I would start off knowing where to make my second cut. All right, now real quick, I'm just gonna go grab a dial counter. All right, so I'm gonna grab a dial caliper right now and I'm gonna measure off where we're at. Okay, so I take a look at this one, where I'm at right now, and you can lock it down. I'm at .827, starting to run out of battery so it's blinking. So I'm at .827, so I've cut just a little bit off of it. I need to be at .785. So if we were to take a look at that, I am at .827, I need to be at .785. Okay, so in diameter, I need to take a total of .042 off. Okay, so I'm getting very close. So that's 42 thousandths of an inch that I need to take off. Now again, if I were to take off, let's say that this is the diameter I have here. If, let's say this is the diameter I have here. If I were to take off 42 thousandths of an inch in this way, also note that it would take off 42 thousandths of an inch off this way. And what would end up happening is it would take off twice as much as I would want to. So remember, we are moving it in on a radius which gets doubled in the diameter. Okay, so make sure you're doing that. So I do not want to move this in a total of 42 thousandths. That will not work out too well for me. Okay, so 42 thousandths, I need to actually move it in a total of 21 thousandths to actually get my cut. Now how I choose to do that is going to depend on what I want my surface finish to look like. I. As far as finishing goes, I will probably not move it in 21 thousandths of an inch right away in the beginning. I'll probably move it in about 10 thousandths of an inch, maybe 10 to 15, and then make my last cut accordingly. Make sure you are checking the measurements in between also. So turn it off, take another reading, and then check to make sure you're at where you need to be at. Now, your last cut that you make, that is going to, we are going to set the spindle speed on the higher end of what we've calculated out. So remember our cutting speed has a range of how fast you can go. We are going to set it to the higher end of the two. And then we are also going to slow down our feed rate just a little bit. And that's gonna give us the best service finish. You might also wanna take the bit out of your um, tool holder and then clean that up for your last cut just to get the best surface finish. Um, so I'm not gonna show you guys how to do this. You should know how to move in. Um, again, we re-zeroed here. So all I'd have to do if I wanted to take off 15 thousandths would be to move this in 15. Okay, move it in 15, take my next cut off, re-zero it, um, pull it out, bring it back in, and then take off whatever else I need to reach 0.785. Now I will be grading based on how accurate these are within a certain tolerance. Um, my tolerances are going to be about a few thousands plus or minus. Okay, so plus or minus three thousandths, you could go down to 0.782, all the way up to 0.788, and that would be acceptable. Um, these lays, like I said, have a little bit of play in them, so we are gonna end up with a little bit of, uh, a little bit higher for tolerances, um, just because they might not cut as accurately as they did when they were brand new. Um, so anyways, you would run the same cuts all the way down. Okay, so the next cut you would make um, 4.625, so we would put balloon fluid there, we would mark it, and then we would cut that down to 0.567. Then you would cut it down to a diameter, um, a diameter of 0.438, and you would bring that down all the way to 3.125. And then the last thing we were actually going to do, because this is going to be threaded, is we're gonna make a little relief cut right here, but that'll be at the very end, right before we thread it. So that little relief cut right there is gonna be at the end. So you would cut this part, this part, and this part down 
to their certain lengths. 